The history of aviation can't be written without a major chapter on western New York. Primarily, there were two companies located here, and they peaked in the 1930s and 40s. Curtis Wright in Chittawaga and Bell Aircraft in Wheatfield. Those were two pretty big companies in the past, weren't they, as far as aviation goes? Well, absolutely, and uh, both very well known, both very well respected. The products they put out, uh, for example, the P-40 uh, and uh, the P-39s and P-63s were workhorses during uh, the Second World War. In 1947, Chuck Yeager became the fastest man alive, riding the Bell X-1 into the history books. The first plane to break the speed of sound. It has a prominent spot here. We spoke with Yeager a few years ago about the X-1. The Air Force realized that a problem existed because of the effects of the speed of sound on the airplane, so they gave uh, Bell Aircraft Company in Buffalo a contract in 1944 to build the X-1, it's called X-S-1, x meant Research S Supersonic, and one was the first contract. Even before the X-1, there was the P-59 Era Comet, a top secret project where Larry Bell's company produced the first jet-powered airplane in the United States. Final assembly took place at what is now the old Trico building in downtown Buffalo. <laughs> Larry Bell was first with a lot of things, like the Bell 47 helicopter. This was the first commercially licensed helicopter in the United States in 1946. Many of them are still flying today. They really made their mark during the Korean War, airlifting wounded to the MASH units. And they were made in the plant in Wheatfield. Now, this particular aircraft was the first presidential helicopter. It was used by Dwight Eisenhower. What was Larry Bell like? Was he really yeah, he's re Well, yes, he was a very aggressive uh, a guy, uh, in my opinion, uh, full of very, very good ideas. He had good engineers uh, there at Bell, and, and he, uh, he, was, he stayed ahead of the program. 